Uh, a little bit better. <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit. A lot of work to be done, you know. And certainly uh, it's that time of year, but the whole focus, no matter what, you have whatever obligations and responsibilities that you have, the entire focus is about the players in this game. And really um, confident about the mindset of our guys. You know, and during the bowl season, a couple things happen. You either you have a mindset to go perform, or you have a mindset to kind of just go have fun. And our guys want to perform well. And to perform well, the investment has to be done during the course of the, the week. How do you, you're going to be in charge of 100 guys for five days in Vegas. You talked about some temptation to have fun. What's, yeah. you put a curfew, do you put some rules? What are you going to tell Absolutely. them going down there? Absolutely, the ones that we've used and I've been a part of for 30 plus years. You know, it doesn't change. Uh, it's Vegas, but every single, every place in America has its temptations and its issues if you let it. So uh, we always say, hey, you control the process, don't let the process control you. So we have very uh, clearly defined parameters that go with this thing, you know, as it relates to curfews and rules and regulations. And well, I'll tell you one thing that I've always learned through the years, if, if you have to have a ginormous book of rules and, and policies, you probably have the wrong guys in the locker room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we have the right guys, I, I do trust and believe, but at the same time, you know, they are young guys. And, You've got to trust, but you've also got to make sure that there's a clear understanding as, as to what the guidelines are. Practice number one yesterday with you as the head coach. Did it feel any different at all? Um, I know there's a lot of energy. You know, our guys are a high-energy operation. The energy, the the execution was good. I mean, uh, technically, you know, we need a lot of polish. It is a uh, it is day one after a one uh, week layoff. So uh, certainly, we've got to we've got to polish up on some things that are going to allow us to be good. But when it relates to fundamentals. In terms of the mental part, very pleased with the way our guys were able to operate and execute and know what to do and how to do it. Um, we just got to do a little bit better. What's your schedule? Are you guys practicing tomorrow? Yes, sir. We're practicing all the way through. You practice all the way through. So you yeah. practice Monday and then Tuesday well, go. Will you practice Tuesday here We'll practice or there? over there. We'll practice, we'll practice over there. The thing is, it's I've been fortunate enough to be a part of a, a couple of championship you know, regimes you know, as a player and as a coach, and that's going to be the schedule that we use. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer if it has stood the test of time, it's probably pretty good. So that's what we're adopting without making too many changes. You know, we've got a nice routine going on right here. Um, it's demanding, but at the same time, it uh, allows our guys to recover and prepare. It is late in the season. You know, for the NFL, this is like almost playoff time, right? Um, during, for us, it's, it's late, and we've got to be smart and, and be ready to get our guys ready to go. On your intro on Friday, you mentioned Coach Arroyo is going to be here. Can you mention any other coaches that you know are going to be here? We will soon. I mean, again, uh, that's the goal, making sure that as many assistant coaches are going to be here as much as uh, as we can make that happen. So, you know, we'll certainly keep you updated. I'm not going to keep that under wraps. You know, and, that, that and a lot of guys like to play hide and seek and everything else. That affects recruiting. Yeah, everything affects recruiting. And recruiting is sometimes affected before or after. So public perception is sometimes uh, not reality. But at the same time, I think we're all going to be uh, extremely pleased. I know we're going to be extremely pleased with the results of uh, everything that we're doing. What's the scouting report on our quarterback? It seems like he's a very veteran guy for them. For them? Yeah. He is. He is. And the film study I had, he is just efficient. He's tough. He's athletic. Uh, he knows exactly what to do. He's a very well-coached individual. I spent the bulk of my time studying uh, their defense because I want to make sure that, um, that my role that I currently have is not compromised. You know, you've got to be careful all of a sudden if you start deviating or drifting from your responsibilities, it could, uh, it could affect your team. Our offensive line has been, uh, you know, a unit that has really performed at a high level this year because of the attention to detail of Coach Woodle, myself, and the rest of, uh, really them, not me. I give them the credit, and I want to make sure that they stay on track with that. I don't want to take away anything that relates to their performance. Um, and again, I think uh, the identity that we're creating here is one of being physical, up front and explosive at the skill positions and disruptive on the defensive side of the ball. We want to maintain that. What stands out about Boise State for what you saw? Just tough, physical, and athletic, just disruptive. I mean, these guys can run, they can bend, they come out of their hips well, they use their hands well. They're a very well coached football team, and it shows. I mean, you don't consistently win that many games a year without being talented, well coached, and they do a great job with personnel use. They put guys in the right spots, uh, they trigger their linebackers, our downhill guys. Usually, you know, when you find a linebacking cores that like to diagnose stuff and kind of go laterally and figure things out. These guys trigger instantly. They are downhill, so you've got to be prepared to be physical from the get-go. The Vegas Bowl director told me you told him you might want to do the Flying Elvis. The Flying Elvis, yes. Uh, i got to work on the hair or use a wig, absolutely, <laughs> and find a good set of glasses. But uh, I, I don't know what the, the weight limitations are on these parachutes. i, I got to figure that thing out. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Elvis, but Elvis will have to wait a little bit until after the bowl game. Did Rebecca complain at all? 
I'm sorry? Did you hear Mexican wind at all? Oh, they were, that's that's probably the more important part, right? <laughs> of anything else, uh, I uh, I have a good feeling we'll be seeing uh, the big guy soon. You know, I, I don't I don't know if we have to do any one on ones now. He's kind of he's taking that next step physically. I got some catching up to do with him, but uh, again, I I told the players, I told them today again, uh, my experience as a player back in the day at the University of Miami was a very special time, uh, and it had nothing to do with anything else except the locker room. And it's it's a bond, it's an experience, it's a relationship that it's, it's a life changer. So I want that for them. Okay. Right, 34.